or you can use brewer's yeast and just give a little bit of it. And you, you really probably can't overdose them. They tend to just excrete the extra niacin. So if you want to do that, um, that can kind of cover that potential issue. Avoid waste, certainly would um, like to. Sorry, I hate yep. to interrupt and you're gonna kill me for this. That's fine. But I forgot to record. <laughs> okay. Can, can you start again? <laughs> sorry. I can. Sorry for those of you that have been here all this time, but <clears throat> I totally forgot to hit the record button. I just remembered now. And um, yeah, if you mm. could please, you can go through the first part a little bit quicker, but Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. That's going to run us late, but um, yeah, I will. I'm I am be, so sorry. That's okay. I, my son will probably kill me too, but we'll do I it. I'm really sorry. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Are we good? Yeah, I've started the recording now. Okay. So welcome. Um, We'll talk today about raising ducks for egg production. Um, and, and yes, I know this is a drake and he's not going to lay eggs, but I thought it was a nice picture to start. So we'll, we'll start out with that. Um, I'm going to talk a bit first about sort of getting started and things like that. First, I'll say, why would you raise duck eggs? Why not chicken eggs? Um, and I think one of the reasons for that is duck eggs tend to be sort of a, a highly marketable product because they're different. Um, you know, farmers markets and things, it's, it's nice to be able to sell something a little different and not everybody can just go to the grocery store and buy duck eggs. So um, there is demand. Usually you get a good price for them. Um, I've heard of, you know, a dollar an egg in farmers markets and things, um, maybe more than that in places. There are some slight differences um, as to where they, the chicken eggs to duck eggs, and I'll touch on that a little bit toward the end. Um, and I think generally ducks tend to be pretty easy to raise. And we'll talk about some of the infrastructure you need and the housing and things, but you can get away with pretty limited capital with them many times. So we have these duck eggs. They're large, they'll attract attention. Um, we'll see some colors and things in a minute. Um, you can use them for decoration, things like that. So getting started, the first thing I would suggest before you even think about buying ducks is to find out if it's legal to raise ducks where you are. Even if it's legal to raise chickens, it may not be legal to raise ducks. So you wanna watch that. Um, <clears throat> you also wanna check rules on selling eggs as to what you're going to have to do. We'll talk a little bit about that toward the end as far as washing them and things like that, but I would look into that first. Then find out where you're going to get your ducklings and I'll touch on that in a couple minutes and what type of ducks you might want to raise and then start getting facilities. This is probably not a good system for raising ducks. Um, so some sources. Mail order hatcheries tend to be the most likely source for many people. <clears throat> you can order them online or, or through their catalogs and then they'll mail them to you in a box and it works well. Many farm stores also will sell ducklings. So that's a good place to start. Um, they're buying them from these hatcheries typically. You might have somebody in your area that raises exhibition birds or raises ducks and you can buy some from them. Um, that can be good. And then lastly, I would say, you know, there are swaps and Craigslist and things like that. I, I probably would not suggest that if you're just getting started. I think it's often safer from a disease standpoint to buy some of these from a hatchery versus there. Um, as you get to know what you're doing a little better, then maybe you can look at some of these options. Some breeds. Um, I think Khaki Campbell is the breed most noted for egg production. If you read things, you'll see some of them can lay as well as a chicken, you know, 350 eggs a, a year, potentially, probably 300 is more of an average. Okay. 
runners also typically have good egg production. Um, pecans, some of these are very good, some are more for meat production. So you wanna look a little bit as to what kind of pecan and what strains there are available. Um, there are some hybrids that have been selected for duck egg production. Um, there's one large mail order hatchery here in the US that sells a lot of those. So that would be an option. And then certainly you can raise other ducks. Um, you know, especially if you're looking at dual purpose, whether it's pretty colors or meat production, things like that. I'll mention Muscovies as well. These are a different species, um, but they're there, okay? Here's the khaki camel on the left, very common one for egg production. These are the runners, okay? Quite a different look, but they're there. Um, pecans, again, tend to be a little more larger in size. Um, so if you're looking at meat production, they would be a good mix for that. Lots of different colors. You can get some with crests, things like that, if you'd like. Okay. I just mentioned the Cayuga. This is kind of an interesting one because they do lay these sort of chocolate colored eggs. Um, this tends to vary a lot from bird to bird and also throughout the season. So they'll get lighter as the season goes on, but this can be a nice marketing thing. There's the Muscovy. Again, very different. I will mention these can fly quite well. Um, so you will have to have a little different housing strategy for them if you want to have them. And again, you can think about dual purpose and raise ducks for meat as well if you'd like. Okay. Once you get to that point, um, you've ordered your ducklings, they arrive, you're ready to go. Basically brooding them is going to be similar to brooding chicks. Um, and so if you're familiar with that, it'll be pretty similar. Typically start out about 90 degrees Fahrenheit the first week and decrease that five degrees per week. Um, I always suggest having a temperature gradient. So have the heat on one side and then it's cooler on the other side and they can decide where they wanna go in between. This usually works pretty well and they'll, they'll move to where they're comfortable. You do wanna be careful that it's safe. Always hear every year about people having fires and so you wanna Watch out for that. I would suggest not having them swim at first. I know it's cute and it looks like it's really something for the ducks, but um, they do chill very easily. They're probably not oiling themselves. So it, it's generally best to wait uh, at least a few weeks before you let them swim. Um, the surface is important. They can have some leg problems if it's slippery, so I would be careful of that. Shavings tend to work quite well. Um, you can start them on wire screen, and this will work very well, too. Um, as they get older, you probably won't want to do that, but when they're young, that can work very well. Okay. Really, I would say a key is have something that's easy to clean. They probably are gonna spill water and they're probably gonna make a mess. And so have something that you can you know, clean up and, and keep fairly dry. <clears throat> if you're just starting with a handful of ducklings, um, this is something, these are a couple I found online that are pretty nice. Again, easy to clean. The plastic is easy to clean out. I do, I really like the wire grating under the water. I think that works very well to try to limit the water splashing around and, and you don't won't be constantly cleaning out the shavings or the straw and putting in fresh. Okay. If you're raising bigger numbers, again, you can do something like this, sort of a wooden partitioned area. You see the shavings, the heat lamp, the feed and water. Even if you're raising thousands of ducks, it's really not very different. The same system is there. As far as feed, um, generally we'll start with a pretty high protein feed, 20 to 22%. Um, and I would suggest using a commercial ration. Again, unless you really know what you're doing, it can be difficult to have a good diet for them. I would say generally avoid medicated feeds. 
probably the chicken feeds you'll get. If you only can get medicated feed, it's probably going to have amprolium and that'll still probably be okay. Ducks can have amprolium, but in general, they don't often need it. And so it's probably best to avoid it. If you can find duck feed, great. If not, I would say a meat bird chicken starter will work pretty well in most cases. Uh, Ron, I just wanted to comment on the, when I heard you mentioning it about the medicated feed, one of the main things that they don't, why they don't want you to feed medicated chicken feed to ducks is that the medications are added at a level that the chickens would eat and the ducks tend to eat more of it. So they sure. would get more medication <clears throat> and it can be toxic to ducks if you're not careful. So okay. be careful about doing duck, medicated duck, a medicated chicken feed to ducks. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Um, as the ducklings get older then, and to get them out of that brooding area, um, you know, we can look at some other housing and really by the time the ducks are feathered out, um, they probably will do pretty well with limited housing. Um, really protection from predators tends to be the biggest issue. So you want to have something to keep them safe from, from things that want to eat them. I would also suggest really having it well ventilated because they're going to be wet. You need to get that moisture removal. Um, have good draining, bedding, um, you know, shavings or straw can work well, sand can work as well. Have something that will drain away because it's, you don't want them standing in wet litter. Um, mobile pens can work. Um, they can be nice to save cleaning and litter and you can move them to a clean area consistently. As they become older, if you're raising them for eggs, like we're talking about having nests and things can be a challenge there, but certainly when you're growing them, um, it can work well to have a mobile pen. Here are some examples. Um, I took these pictures a few years back here in Wisconsin and it was summer. Um, and yes, I know there are turkeys there, but uh, um, there's ducks as well. And really, again, you can see there's shade and cover for them, um, but otherwise they don't need a whole lot of huge housing, especially in the summer. Here's one with ducks in it. Um, again, some fencing to keep them in and keep predators out um, <clears throat> and some shelter there can work very well. Winter, you'll need a little more protection Again, still predator protection is gonna be the biggest point. The ducks may not wanna go in a lot, even when it is cold, but you wanna give them some shelter. Um, heat is always a contentious issue and I'll not spend a lot of time there. I think it varies a lot by different situations and what you wanna provide. Um, I will say probably one of the biggest issues you're gonna have is the eggs will freeze. Even if the ducks are very comfortable, the eggs will freeze. And so um, that can be a reason you might wanna have some heat. They'll also need to eat a lot more feed. So depending on the situation, again, providing heat might be cheaper than uh, adding extra feed. Um, again, depends on how many birds you have, where you're located. Here in Wisconsin, it's gonna be different than you know Kentucky. Um, so, that's something for each of you to consider, I think, in your own situation. Certainly the ducks will do well in cold weather. They have thick down, they can do very well. If they have water access, they'll probably swim in it. Um, having outdoor access, even in the snow is good and they'll be comfortable in it. Um, something that I think is kind of, it, need about them. They have this special anatomy in their legs. And basically they have what's shown here on the right where the arteries with blood coming down out of the body are intertwined with the veins coming back up from the feet. And so the heat from the blood coming out of the body is transferred to the blood coming back up into the body. And so the blood temperature in the foot is actually much cooler than the temperature of the blood in the body. And this allows them to stand on 
ice or snow and really do quite well and not have so much problem with heat loss from the feet and legs. So kind of an interesting biological adaptation. One thing that I would suggest, and this is even good in the summer, is trying to limit the water spillage and the wet litter. <clears throat> so if you have some method of drainage under the water, this can be very helpful. Having a crate or something under the water so that it can drain away and they can't get in it and make a mess. Um, gravel underneath it can work very well. Um, again, if you're building a building and you have drains, even better, but some way to get that water drained away rather than making a wet, muddy mess around is good. Um, also raising the water up can help so they can't dabble in it as much and spill so much. So from there, I'll, I'll go into just some comments about husbandry. And we usually talk about flaws or feed like air, water, and space. So I'll just mention a couple things about each of these. And I'm going to go pretty quickly through some of this. Okay. Um, so feed, we talked about the starters. We do typically want to lower it um, after a couple of weeks. Um, and I'll talk about that in health. Once the birds are at an age for egg production will certainly need to increase calcium because they'll need a lot more calcium for eggshells. Okay. Um, I'll just mention as well, there's a, a vitamin, a B vitamin called niacin. And for some reason, ducks tend to need more niacin than chickens do. And so this can be an issue. And if you have a deficiency, they can have leg problems. Um, from what I have seen, most chicken feeds probably have enough extra niacin in them that the ducks will probably be okay on this. But if you're concerned about it, you can add a little bit of, of brewer's yeast, um, excuse me, or uh, you can actually get some B vitamin niacin tablets, um, usually from a human pharmacy and, and give those. So, um, that's something that some people have had problems with in the past with using a chicken feed and, and you might see that. Probably it's more likely if you're trying to mix your own ration um, that you might run into that. Again, avoiding waste is good. So if you can raise the feed up a little so they can't play in it as much, that usually is helpful. Ducks do tend to have some problems with molds. So you wanna watch out for that and try to keep things dry and not have moldy feet around. Um, and I'll just mention for planting, adults probably, depending on the size of the duck, will eat a third to a half a pound of feed per day. So you can kind of plan on that um, as far as how much you'll need for them. I just mentioned quickly grazing, and yes, these are geese. Um, geese especially are known for grazing, but ducks will do a little bit of it. I wouldn't count on it, you know, replacing a lot of the feed, but it certainly can be good and they'll enjoy it and they'll probably eat a fair amount of, of plants. Um, they tend to favor grass, um, but, but other plants they'll eat as well. I would say if your birds are out where they're eating plant material like that, you'll want to provide grit. So some rocks of some sort for them to eat, and that'll help with digestion. Just a little bit on lights. Um, you can raise ducks on natural light. They probably won't lay as well over the winter. And so if you want, if you're really doing this for egg production and you want to raise them um, and want to get eggs over the winter, probably having artificial lights will be good. And you can get a timer pretty cheaply and run them. Um, typically 14 to 17 hours per day of light will keep them laying um, throughout the winter. One foot candle is probably bright enough. Two to three foot candles is often used. So it doesn't have to be real bright, um, but something that will keep the lights on for 14 to 17 hours a day. Again, ventilation, we've talked about it, so I'll just go on, but you do need to get that moisture out. 
Water is kind of an interesting one because we often think about ducks as needing ponds or things like that. Um, they do need water, but there's actually been a lot of ducks raised on nipple waters. And I would say with very little problem, there's been some research on this. And really about the only difference that was noted with raising them on nipples was that they tended to get a little more waxy buildup on their feathers um, than if they had water that they could bathe in. So they were certainly healthy. Um, so it, you can do that, but a lot of people will at least give them something to dip their heads in, things like that. Um, you do want to make sure they have fresh, clean water. Okay. I mentioned here, consider moving it outside in the summer. And the reason I say that is again, to try to keep their indoor area drier. We'll talk about kind of the flip side and why that might not be a good idea in a couple minutes. This I thought was sort of an interesting thing. There's a company produced these four ducks where they could dip their head down into this and yet it was still pretty clean and more like a nipple water. I don't know how available those even are. These are pretty common, these bell type waters. Um, they can work well and they're, they're automatic so you don't have to keep filling them. Um, you do need to clean them, but um, they work pretty well for ducks as well. Space, I'll just mention here, again, I'm getting a little bit behind, I think, but um, typically I would suggest three to six square feet per adult duck as a minimum. Um, if you can have more than that, it's probably better. And then 12 to 15 square feet of outdoor run, okay? Um, again, those are, I would say, a minimum. I wouldn't suggest going less than that. Nests are another thing. And it really doesn't take very much for a nest, um, but you wanna have the nests available before they start laying or they'll probably find their own places to nest. Um, and really, again, you can just see some pretty simple boxes will work very well. Um, tubs like this, a lot of people use those and they'll work very well, okay? It doesn't really have to be a magic thing that they use. Um, 12 to 14 inches is probably a good size for most ducks. You can have bigger, but that's gonna work typically well. Um, and I would suggest one for every four to five ducks would be good. If you can have them away from the water, that will help with the cleanliness of the eggs. Okay. So um, a few health problems you might run into. This is what's called angel wing, and this is something you'll see um, in geese and ducks. This quite often is caused by excess protein during uh, growth when they're young, and the feathers grow quickly, and it can actually twist the end of the wing, and then they will grow like this. Um, so that's a reason that we want to cut down the protein after the first couple of weeks, and it can help stop this. I have heard of people correcting this. If you notice that the wing twists, you can actually sort of tape it up and usually it'll, it'll correct, but it's best to, to stop, to prevent it in the first place. Um, and, and again, usually it's a, an excess in protein. Bumblefoot is another one that's fairly common. Um, you can see problems, swelling, sores um, on the duck foot. Um, so we'd like to avoid those. Sometimes antibiotics will cure these, um, but really we'd like to prevent them ideally. And so the best way to prevent them is really to have good dry litter um, and not have you know ammonia production and wet litter that they would be standing in. There can be some possible injuries that can do this. So if you can have, if there are boards with slivers and things like that, that would cause injuries, those can also be a problem. But typically litter, um, poor litter tends to be a big cause of this. So if we can avoid that, that will help. And I've listed some other diseases here. I'm not gonna go in detail on them. 
um, but they're certainly out there uh, and things to consider, okay? I will mention avian influenza. This is certainly something that, that can be a problem and, and you'd li like to avoid um, contact with wild birds to, to help prevent that. Certainly there's a lot said on biosecurity. I think we've already had whole seminars on biosecurity, so I won't spend a lot of time here. These are from APHIS and these are things to do to help prevent um, your birds from getting sick. <clears throat> Again, I would say a key one is to try to avoid interaction with wild birds. And this can be a challenge when you're raising your birds outdoors. And after I just told you that you should move your water outside, um, you know, maybe you want to move it inside because that can help prevent wild birds. So you may have to kind of weigh your options there and see which one is more of a concern. Um, but if you can keep wild birds away, it's, it goes a lot toward preventing diseases. Okay. I'll mention also human safety. And this is something that's been in the news a lot in the last few years. So you do wanna be careful with this really be careful with children and having them around the, the ducklings. Um, there's some, certainly some salmonella concerns. The CDC recommends really that, you know, five and under don't have a lot of contact with them. Um, certainly I would suggest having parental guidance, um, wash their hands, Try not to let them suck their thumbs, things like that. No kissing of the ducks, okay? So um, things like that are, are always good to remember. <clears throat> Predators, again, I, I'm going pretty quickly, but uh, um, this can especially be a problem with young birds. As they get older, they can fight off some things pretty well. Um, but you'll still have some issues as you see a fox, coyotes, things like that. Some of you probably live where there's a lot of other uh, animals. I have heard of people actually using geese to fight uh, to protect uh, the ducks and the geese can be pretty formidable um, against, you know, things like a fox, a dog, things like that. Um, Certainly fencing is good, guard dogs uh, can be good. Um, so there's different things. And I think we've, again, probably if you've seen some of these other talks, there's been things about predators. I'll just mention a little bit on breeding. If you wanna reproduce your flock, um, I would suggest in most situations using, planning to use an incubator, um, you may have luck with natural incubation and letting the ducks uh, sit on their own nests. Um, it can be a challenge trying to get them to go broody when you want to have new ducklings is a challenge. Trying to have nests for them so that the other ducks aren't laying in with them and, and breaking eggs and things can be a mess. Um, but certainly it's an option that you can use. Um, I think if you're looking to produce fertile eggs, typically one drake to every five or six ducks can work pretty well. Um, some of the lighter breeds, mallards and things, you might get away with one up to 10 ducks. Um, but uh, again, that would be to produce fertile eggs if you're gonna reproduce them, or if you're selling fertile eggs, which might be a market for you as well. I think the last thing I have is to talk a little bit about marketing the eggs. Um, <clears throat> and again, I mentioned I would watch out and check local regulations. I know we have state regulations here as far as how you can sell your eggs, um, what licenses you need, how the eggs need to be packaged and washed and things like that. Um, I think in most situations, you're gonna find that you'll need to wash the eggs in order to market them. That can, can vary a bit and some people don't like that necessarily, but um, 
I would say that's a pretty common uh, thing, but it would be one to check. Um, if you need to wash the eggs, ideally, first of all, you keep the nest area clean and you gather the eggs quickly so that the eggs aren't very dirty to start with. Um, again, this can be a challenge if it's muddy, if it's things like that. Um, you can sometimes dry clean, okay? So maybe sandpaper, if there's just a couple of spots on the eggs, you can do that. Um, again, it may depend on your situation with what is required. I know we're often required to have the eggs washed. There are washers you can buy, commercial washers. Um, one thing I would stress, and this is true for any of the eggs, you want the water that you're using to be warmer than the egg itself so that it, it doesn't chill the egg and make it suck stuff in, okay? Uh, if you have cold water, it will cause the egg to pull dirt in through the pores. Um, so you definitely wanna use warmer water, okay? There are some egg sanitizers that can be used. Again, you'll probably wanna check your individual uh, rules for that as to what's available and what is allowed. The nutrition, I would say, again, there's, there's some different thoughts on this. From what I have seen um, in research, really the, the main difference with the eggs is size. So the duck egg is about, you know, half again as big as the chicken egg typically. So you tend to have just more of everything in it. Um, there are some differences. Duck eggs typically have slightly more protein and fat and less water in them. So um, again, you, you can have some differences there on a per 100 grams of, of egg or per unit of egg. There are some slight differences. Ron, there was one question. Um, I answered it, but I just want to make sure that um, I was right. Uh, they wanted to know if different breeds of duck eggs taste differently. And <laughs> I, I said it was like chicken eggs that, you know, it's not the breed that determines it. It's the diet of the, of the hen laying the egg. I assume that's the same with duck eggs. The, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, don't I've never seen any different uh, I assume it's the that. same but yeah. I, I also would like to point out that um, I have a friend who's allergic to chicken eggs and people <clears throat> who are allergic to chicken eggs can still eat duck eggs so that's in my next slide yep oh is it okay yep. sorry I, I so, preempted you there yep no that's fine um I, I will say again some slight differences I think some people notice a difference in texture between duck eggs and chicken eggs. They'll say that the whites are a little more rubbery. I think this depends on how you cook them, um, but there can be some slight differences. And then, yeah, the last thing I have, there are some, some people this works that, that if they're allergic to chicken eggs, they can eat duck eggs. Um, I think we have to be a little careful there because I'm not sure that's 100% across the board. So I, I think we have to be a little careful, but but you're right. Definitely some people that works. So um, it probably depends on what actual protein they're allergic to in the, the eggs, but um, um, certainly a consideration for some, yeah, so. So I, I've kind of gone quickly through a lot of different things, but hopefully that gives you some ideas. Yeah, again, I apologize for the <laughs> having to restart. But sure. um, yeah, the, the only question that came in uh, during the talk was the question about different um, breeds. Okay. If anybody has a question, now's your chance to, uh, you know, your last chance, type it in the chat box or the Q&A and um, we'll get before Ron has to run over, run away and pick up his son. <laughs> Take him to hockey practice. Take him to hockey practice. Oh, yes. Wisconsin, got to be hockey. Yeah. Um, when you were talking, while well, people are thinking about questions, 
Um, oh, here, okay, there is a question. And I, I don't think you, you know, mentioned it. And so a lot of people don't know you don't need roosters for hens to lay eggs. And I assume it's the same thing with ducks. And the question was, is there any advantage of having drakes with your ducks? other than fertile eggs they're pretty um <laughs> no i don't think so i mean i think you know again other than they're they're pretty and and nice to have but no i don't think so i found that um that the uh like with with free range chickens the having the rooster around though it doesn't do anything for egg production it can often keep the the hens closer to the shelter. They don't tend to wander off as much. Um, okay. And they tend to spend more time um, looking out for the flock, for especially aerial predators and that kinds of thing. I don't know if it's the same with, with you know, free range drakes, or ducks or, or whatnot. Um, yeah, I don't know either. I. I haven't seen a lot of that, but possibly. So. Yeah, I mean, it's all theoretical, depending on the thing. Um, right. uh, one question is, uh, how many eggs can be produced yearly? That'll obviously be a breed thing. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I think the khaki Campbells, you know, can be as good as a chicken, I would say. So, you know. Some of the other breeds, maybe 250 a year, somewhere in there, down to even less, depending on some of them. Yeah, I've seen numbers of up to 300, especially yeah. with the, the hybrids. Yeah, the hybrids. true. Um, I guess this is a follow up on, on my statement, but oh yes, yeah, so, uh, Helen Adays, who's, in, who's the one in the UK, she says that her drakes watch out for the the girls. Okay. So I guess I was right. Okay. She sure. has runner ducks. Um, yeah. Some use runner ducks for training dogs too. For yeah. Thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, got an anonymous attendee wants to know: Can you purchase only female ducks from the mail order companies? I believe so. At least. Um, some of them, yeah, most of them, I think, will sex them, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Probably won't be 100%, but close. Especially if it's an egg breeding, egg laying type of, of yeah. duck, they probably, um, yeah. Um, what should the temperature of the water be used for washing eggs? Well, again, the, the key is that it's warmer than the eggs. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people look at, say, 105, 110 Fahrenheit, um, something in that range, because the eggs are not, I mean, they're 105 coming out of the duck, but they won't stay that way very long. So certainly, uh, but really the key is warmer than the egg itself at the time you're washing. I think it's it. like 20 degrees, isn't it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Above, I mean, twenty degrees above the. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember what the federal regulations are. I think that sounds right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just. That's Fahrenheit for. Right. <laughs> um, one of the things too is that um, how you wash them is important. I've seen the the egg washers sometimes they have su um, submersion washing where they put it in there and it agitates it around for like 20 minutes or something and that's not allowed in most states kentucky being one of them right um, because that's when you start getting all the bacteria and crap yeah. being sucked in so yeah. okay i'm not seeing any oh here we are most docile breeds looking for 4-H member project birds. Are the khaki Campbells easy to? I mean, I, I think most of them tend to be pretty docile. I don't think of them as being real wild, you know, compared to chickens. Um, yeah, I don't, for me, I guess Muscovies are not very, they might be a little 
aggressive. Different or more aggressive. Um, but I think generally most of the mallard types are going to be fine. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, will predators stop lay in ducks like a fox or a rat? Stop them from laying? Yeah, basically, if you get a, a predator attack, it's going to stress the <clears throat> ducks. Will they go out of production because of the stress? I would think so. Yeah, I would say they're about like a chicken that way. Anything? I'd also be concerned with rats, especially eating the eggs. So Or attacking the babies. Or the babies, yeah, definitely. Um, Kim Coward says the her runners are very nice and docile. I think yeah. the fact that they can use them as training herding dogs is a good example of just how good yeah. they are. Uh, and then how do they sex ducks? <laughs> Ducklings. That's vent sexing, isn't it? <clears throat> vent sexing, yeah. I believe, actually, I think Metzer Farms has some of their hybrids are color sexing. I some believe I read that that they okay. have at least one set that are color sex. So the males are, are more yellow and the females are brown or vice versa, I, I think, but generally vent sexing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot easier on ducks than chicks, I think. Yeah. That's a typical. Uh, oh, Helena said that the her runner ducks run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, well, they, they really do run. They don't waddle, they run. Right why they call them runner ducks so okay thank you very much you still managed to get through in a reasonable amount of time despite my my problem um so for those of you i will be it was recorded finally and i will have the recording up probably by the end of the day i have to go deal with another problem uh, which distracted me um, from starting the recording um, but thank you ron for um staying to the end to give the presentation it was a great presentation i learned a lot um, for those of you that are interested next month is on heavy metals or is that a concern for backyard flocks it is a problem in europe uh, to some degree and uh, we are starting to see some problems here in the united states too so that will be the topic it's like march 2nd i think so hopefully we'll see you uh, next month for that one. Thank you, Ron. Have a good week. And thank you guys for attending. I'm stopping the transcript, the, the recording. Thanks.